space exploration, what are the things we are doing and what we can do probably. So we know that we have gone to moon and uh, we have gone to Mars and Chandrayaan to and other things will be coming. I'll tell you very briefly about all of it. So then uh, this is planetary exploration. But we can explore some stars also. So only why I brought it that our first real tough good uh, astronomical satellite has just gone up about a month back and it is doing well and it will be it will, see the main thing is that it is not enough just to do because you want to do today everything has to be competitive at international level so there was a time earlier that in Assam if we do something somebody from elsewhere you know patronize as if we are doing something great but it is not true we should be very able to I mean that's what I am emphasizing you should be very critical of yourself in what you do then I think you can go little air otherwise if you think of excuse, I also used to give many excuses why I couldn't do something which I am supposed to do. But then if you have a tough taskmaster like <laughs> Professor Lal, so he works in the lab up to 11th year. So some of, most of the time when I went from Guwahati, I thought, you know, he's a senior professor, he should be respected. He has not gone for lunch, how I can go? So I missed lunch, dinner, sorry, the dinner many a time. And then some fellow say, are you stupid? Why don't you go away when he's not looking at you? So, <laughs> so these are young days, okay, PhD days. So, so, but what I'm saying that uh, if you, you you do need a, I, I was not very happy with him many a time. But you know, once you can convince him that you know, then people become very nice. There are times when I'll do some calculation, I'll give it. He'll say, no, no, this is wrong. So once I, he got so angry with me, he just stole the paper. So what I did, I took the paper from the ground, put a cello tape on top of it. I said, I am. Right. <laughs> so, but but you see, you should be very confident in when you are saying that. Otherwise, next day you will be shown the door. Because I am only a graduate student at that time. I didn't have a job. Okay, so, but anyway, that we are doing. And then this is what we are not doing, but we should do. Because you see, nowadays, what are, you see, in ISRO, 80%, more than 80% until recently is only for doing things which will for determinant of whatever you call the country. Like, you know, you can call communication, remote sensing, you know, everything. It is only there. And even today, we send at least uh, four to five satellites every year. And we get a scope for doing science once in five years. So that means in 25 satellites, we get one satellite to go, or two or one or two, and we should be good at it so that we can compete with others. So this is about, uh, you have heard probably, in 2012, there was a very get scare that there is something is happening on the sun and everybody will get killed. And when these things comes up, it is raised in parliament also, we are asked to answer. And people forget that India is sitting in the equatorial magnetic equator. Even Canada may burn, you know, they are near the poles. Because, you know, in the magnetic field, poles, uh, particles can come in, but in the equator we are much safe. But even then, it took a while, even Professor Dr. Kostirangan, who was a, a planning commission, he said, no, no, you send quickly a three-page note, because I have to give it. And then, of course, uh, you see, sometimes, uh, but it is true that we should understand space weather. It is definitely needed that we should know if sun is behaving differently, what is happening, at least so that if there is some precaution need to be taken, we can take. And so we need some satellite for that, and that will come up soon, but uh, it is in the planning stage and execution stage. So I'll, but you see the timeline, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. So anybody who wants to do anything in space has to be, must have something like, you know, second job. Because it's a very tedious, very slow, and you have to work very hard. And finally, worst of it, sometimes when it goes up and doesn't work properly. But in, these are these are facts of life. I mean, nothing you can do. You have to take some risk and then... But that time, you see, it is not that when I... I must tell you a story. I was very reluctant to join the moon mission. Because after working in the Apollo sample for seven, eight years, I said, no, no, we cannot do anything more from it. Something new. So I changed. Okay, completely changed. I went to mass spectrometry. And I, again, you know, something to do with solar system. But then... You see, if you do not do something in time and properly, life becomes very difficult. And then one has to be very sure and planning also. And then if something goes wrong, you must have, you must do parallel things. And I told you in Moon Mission, I was thinking that how can India can go? I don't want to do it because I didn't have that great faith at that time. But I must tell you why I remember, Chaudhuriji, because I was given a, there was an academy meeting, you have a range at IIT Guwahati. Yes, so I was there, people from ISRO was there, so there was a gentleman called George Joseph, he was director of one the institute, on the Brahmaputra bank, he talked to me one year, 
and finally he told the Goswami, Ishwara has given you so far everything. You are the only person <laughs> available now who has seen moon or moon, lunar sample, so you have to do it for, as a duty. So of course I took it and once I took it, I full, uh, put full force on it. And then you will also see that in Isro, if you do well, you get a lot of freedom. So then the Isro said that it should be a science mission. We cannot do science mission. Because real science, which is competitive. Not because we don't know how to do it. No, see, anything you do from space, you need good detectors. Okay, you look at uh, some light or something like that. And so you need detectors. We cannot make any one of them. And then the better ones, nobody will give you. Because it is called dual purpose detector. Some of you uh, younger group, you see nowadays the umpire doesn't have to do anything when there is a sneak in the cricket. They look for the, you know, it's called infrared detector. So if you look at infrared, uh, when the ball touches the bat, it warms a little, so you get a spot. But normal light, you don't see it, so nobody will give us infrared detector. We need this to find the minerals of the moon surface. Okay? So same way, there are other X-ray detectors. Okay, they will not give those ones which are very useful. So if you want to compete, you have the detector of the same time. And that time we are not in good book of US and other places. Therefore, I propose to the chairman that I know many people there. I know they are good friends of mine. Can I announce there that we have a mission and they can propose? And there was no official, nothing. He said, yes, go ahead and do it. So I did that and then many people are interested and they were given send proposal. If you select it within six months, you have to get money from somewhere. Otherwise, you are out. <coughs> European Space Agency chairman came to Bangalore to discuss. If you choose anything, we will pay even before they submitted the proposal. And US felt very bad because we didn't ask them formally. <laughs> so, so when we selected two of their proposal and then there is a only a website in the NASA website they put that the following the instrument are chosen to go in the Indian uh, space mission if India accepts it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not polite, because we didn't even talk to them. So now you see, so now if we would not have done it, to be very frank, China is much, much more advanced than us in technology. But we would have had in the science what China is having. They don't have any credit for doing any great science. They have gone to moon many times than us. And, but we are known for something. So I just like to tell some of those. But let's astro set. This is the first thing first. It has gone up. This is the instrument that has gone up. Again, it has many institute, TIFI Institute of Astronomy, uh, that uh, uh, Indian Institute of Astrophys Astronomy, IUCA, PRL, Roman Research Institute. But here also, we have two little universities in England who are in company. They are giving us the detector. Some detector we need, which we cannot make, they make it themselves. So there is no question of, you know. So now, you see, why go to space to look at stars? Because stars we can see from here. So it is true for most of the stars, not, but, but not uh, some of those who have a lot of energy and emit in certain things. Like, you know, all the things you hear about, you know, explosive star, you know, these, that, you know, exotic things on uh, stellar uh, in the sky, they are all emit most of them in gamma ray, x-ray, uh, up to ultraviolet, but gamma ray, x-ray and everything. But you see, all those are blocked by atmosphere. It cannot come through. Okay, when you come to visible, we have some, you know, somewhere it comes down so we can manage it. So then again, if you get infrared, again it got absorbed. So again, if you go to long wave, radio blocked and radio wave, of course. It, in, if in radio you do, you can do from art. There are a lot of, uh, you know, observatories, radio observatory all over the globe. So now our people are, they have done a lot of work on X-ray and other things earlier. So they wanted in X-ray and gamma ray. So we have to go to space. And this was a difficult task. And then uh, well, just now, which are the, other, but we have to be competitive. Right now, the Chandra Observatory is getting a lot of data X-ray from the space. And Hubble Telescope is getting in optical. But there is a problem. We are putting all together because you see, it is like that. Uh, sorry, please excuse me. We have very senior people here, very young people here. So I am going to tell like stories only, too many things. So you see, you have heard the question of uh, an old, old uh, elephant and six blind men or something like that. Okay? So you are touching something, you are interpreting. So you are touching. Now, if you do five wavelengths, all of them to say the same thing, you are sure that it is right. Because you look at a star at a given point by Hubble telescope. After some time, another telescope goes and look at it. So between this and that time, there may be some changes also. So if you can look also, that was the idea of this. So that is what we are doing. And then 
Okay, so don't worry. But you see how many wavelengths we are putting. 0.328 keV, there is one X-ray, then some proper, it is also X-ray, but 3 to 80 keV, 20 to 150, 2 to 10, and there is one in ultraviolet also. Just for some idea they have, so they will look at there also. But you know, this connectivity is very important, and that is why I think it will be, it is a multi-wavelength study, it is not a single wavelength. And now you see, uh, let me tell you uh, here. See, long, long back we had, a, we had done an X-ray experiment in space. This is a little, uh, you know, piggyback, another two piggybacks here. This has gone in 1996, we have done some extra experiment. So we know that we know how to do it, how to interpret it. But it was a smaller. Now, this whole, uh, whole uh, big box is only x-ray. Uh, I mean, uh, for this, this kind of stuff. And so it is there, then it is there, and it has gone up on 28 September. And you see, this is pictures from this. Uh, these are. Uh, unofficial, eh? so you have not seen it, but you, have, you are seeing it. Okay. So, so now you see this is a particular crab nebula, this is an image, and then you see this is a picture. You see this satellite is going around the equator like this. So, when it goes with the backside, it does not see, when it comes up, it sees a star. So, this is what is happening uh, here that this is the you know, the, it is not seeing, it is on the other side. Then it came up and the uh, satellite sees it, you see, it is goes up and a different thing, so everything is working fine. This is again a different energy we have, so you are getting different spectra. So this is just the data, we are very happy that it is working fine. And then uh, now I come back down to from star to our own solar system and planets. Okay, so we want to understand origin and evolution, because even now I think uh, that is one area where we have done some work at PRL, people now believe that most probably many things in the universe happens because of uh, some accident. I think our solar system formed because there was a star somewhere, it exploded, and then the gas and other things, then it, uh, explode means it's going out. So it squeezed some gas, and that is what is the solar system. So don't ask me how I know it or something like that. <laughs> Please believe me, okay? Because, so now, you see, but when you want to understand a planet, so what are the parameters you want to study? So there are physical properties, chemical properties. Physical properties, topography, ups and down. Okay? If Himalaya was not there, we would have never known about plate tectonics, movement and other things. Okay? So these things are important. Gravity. So whether there is some anomaly or other things within a spherical object, near spherical object, if you measure gravity, if there is gravity anomaly there, you can tell something what is inside it. Magnetic field, plasma and atmosphere. We have them in art. Anything, even in small amount or other amount, if it is there in other planets, we should know. And radiation environment, that is, when we go there on when we send spacecraft there, we should know what kind of harsh radiation they will feel. Because they don't have any, moon doesn't have magnetic field, Mars also have very feeble, nothing, no important. So you get very harsh radiation, so your things has to survive. That is physical, chemical. So people will like to say, you have a lot of rocks here. I can assure that more than 80% of you do not know what type of rock that is and what are the minerals there. If I am wrong, please raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think you see, because you see, you see all the rocks here, we are not interested. I mean, many of these rocks are more than 2.5 billion year old. What you see here. I don't know how they are here, but they are here. So, <laughs> but uh, rock types, if you know what are the different rock types, because you see, if you go to Deccan uh, area, that something came up, best, you know, liquid came up, it filled up, it is all black. They are not rock like what you will see on near Kamaiksa temple. So you see, these different rocks. So then you can figure out how they have come, how they have evolved and all those things. And surface composition and internal structure. And this is, last one is very important, special features. Is there anything like some water kind of things are there? The reason is very simple. We don't have anybody to say hello outside the earth. So is there is any place where there may be some life or anything is happening or something like that. It is a quest for a long time and whether even in planets which we have in our system, was there something earlier, we do not know very properly. Okay, so origin of evolution and life, this is a standard thing for us today because we know we are here. Is there is nobody else? There are a lot of work going on actually. There are other things, they are sending messages out, you know, out of the, you know, almost close to the end of, you know, other end of the universe to see if somebody will respond back. But we are so far saying only hello, the other side is not said, who are you? Okay, so 
now but for our own system mars is the most uh, prime target for looking if there is any kind of biological activity was there forget about life because it is a fact that mars had water and i must tell you i will probably have a slide there when we come to mars and even it is regularly every year some water is produced there because atmosphere has co2 and h2 also very minimal amount so uh, Mars is the an IC satellite of Jupiter. It is a long time before we can go there. And so now the question is that find water and follow the water if you want to look for life. So other possibilities. So you always have to bring some commercial angle to it. Kalam always used to like it, although I couldn't convince him that we cannot get anything done there. So resource utilization, because they are maybe usually like, you know, the shooting stars that you see, they are part of some meteorites. So when meteorites come, before they come into the atmosphere, if you can catch them, you will get a lot of rare minerals and elements, which we do not have plenty, and that is enough. So people are even thinking of business proposition like that, but it is not an easy job to go and catch a meteorite to bring them. <laughs> so in principle, these are correct, okay? Based for scientific observation and exploration. So now people want to dirty the moon. They want to go and make uh, observatories there and do it there. So there is now a lot of uh, movement that the uh, moon should be explored but not uh, destroyed. I mean, not, uh, I mean, you don't put anything which is not in inherent to it. And of course, our when the rocket goes and rocket fuel and everything has already dirtied a lot of it. But uh, you should not put something, it should be kept in pristine stage. So, uh, but if you can do a base of sandy, you dig to the moon, go inside and do something that's different. But uh, outside, it is not very good. Okay, so now, see, even before we have gone to moon, uh, we didn't know at that time that we can find moon on Earth's surface, moon sample. So these are the logs brought by Apollo mission. And these are just lunar meteorites that fall on Earth. Because we know what to look for, so we can get it. So same way, you see, these are coming from Mars. So you will say, how you will know it? Don't ask too much, because that will go to another world. But if you can do some isotopic uh, analysis, okay, we find that the line that is followed by that uh, this meteorite, okay, things like that, they, I'll tell you one easier thing. See, Russia has gone there and landed on Mars, long back. And they measured the atmospheric composition. They found certain gas there, okay, and in certain amount. And in these rocks, they are there. Those gas. In, and once you say gas, you cannot uh, put only a hydrogen, no, not allowed. H1, H2, H3, hydrogen, deuterium, tritium, okay? So when you do the isotopic ratio of those things, if it matches, that means you have stamped it that these are similar, okay? So now, we, therefore, we know that that is from Mars, and then, now we have interplanetary dust particles. If you go 20 kilometers up, open up a wing in your aircraft with some gum, then you can catch it. <coughs> okay, then people have gone to comet wheel 2 and got sample from there. Okay, so they went near the comet and opened the collectors like this and then closed it and came back to Earth. So then uh, dust grain and then landing on a comet. You, I, last year, uh, no, this year only, we have uh, the European people, they have landed on a comet. And then uh, they are trying to do some analysis, but not that great. But these things are happening. So what we can do? Uh, let's not worry. So this is ISRO, why I am putting this slide. See, there are some departments where I must admit that ISRO has a different culture and it tries to stick, stick to... 1999, Dr. Kosturangan told in Delhi to ministerial meeting that we wanted to go to moon, 275 kilogram, 140 kilogram satellite, Working out the mission objective take times, if all goes well, it could be reality by 2008. Told in 1999, from 97 there were meetings, how to do it. So, and we have gone in 2008. So we have gone in 2008. So now what you need to go to uh, say, reach a planet? First it will be a launch vehicle, which will keep on doing this so that it gets some speed. We cannot even produce a high propulsion, uh, I mean, launch vehicle also. Because why you are doing this? Because this is like uh, short put. You do like this, then you let it go. And uh, nobody else will do it. Because our energy resource is such that we have to do a lot of this kind of stuff to go there. But then this is taking that satellite, it will go. But the satellite should have on, go on its own to the moon okay, or to the Mars. 
up to this point it is given so that it can go out of earth's gravity and then it will find its own way so now then you have to communicate we didn't have anything for communication so within 4 years a 2.5 meter antenna was built by isro so which communicates to moon it cannot communicate to mars is the you cannot communicate anything to talk i'll tell you tell you later why so maintenance in lunar orbit once it is there same moon is not a uh, nice sphere so the spacecraft will go suddenly it will find it has been pulled it will go up and down up and down and sometime it distorts the orbit and it is very difficult to maintain because if it goes down or something you have to immediately send some signal that push it up and uh, as you know and then sometimes sun sun angle if the sun angle is bad something gets heated up our mission was supposed to stay there for two years we stayed only 11 months from ninth month our things become heated up actually paper said uh, sundayan is burning or something like that but it is true that it got heated up and that because of the heat some uh, small you know in, uh, component uh, it got bad it m m makes the communication of the data and other things but we always have a second one so we lasted with the second one for some time and then our chandrayaan said bye to us uh, before time i mean uh, 11 months so uh, all those things you see now if any country wants to go for space they have to i mean self reliant in all this others can give you piggyback journey we have gone long long back even our astronaut has gone up to you know space in russian spacecraft we have flown in russian spacecraft our initial uh, so, you know that uh, instruments but if you want to go and then you learn back from mistakes only and uh, so key for success is sound engineering backed by analytical analysis. I mean the sound engineering, so this is one area where engineering uh, is uh, much, much more important than uh, anything else because uh, small mistakes kill the whole thing. Okay, now I think uh, when, let us not do much of it, but anyway, I will not go into all details. See, there is a, uh, you know, people do calculation, there is a possibility that Earth is an impact on Earth, took a little bit of us and made the moon. Now you will say, how you tell this? Again, you know, it's like uh, finger printing. I was telling that the uh, isotope finger printing is the case here. So the oxygen 16, 17, 18, if you do 16 by 18, 17 by 18, you get a line for all Earth samples. It goes to a And now you take a meteorite, you do that, it doesn't match. We have different kind of meteorites. You take the Mars sample and analyze, it just falls there. So there was some sort of uh, that, uh, sorry, sorry uh, no, if you take moon sample, it falls there. So there is a some uh, hunch that uh, maybe art and moon are of the same thing and something come and hits, uh, you know, art a little bit away and took it and that became the moon. So it, it now with lot of calculation, computer and other things, uh, they have done it, but I will not go to it. What we have done? I think one thing that we got a lot of attention is that we found uh, hydroxyl OH and H2O molecule signature on lunar surface. We never told water, but India has found water on moon, as if we can go and take bath there. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 but you know, we are happy, people are happy, we are happy. So, but this is something because no, and then you can ask, uh, this is also there is a story. Nobody thought there is water on moon. But one very nice, well, very well-known professor in um, uh, that San Diego, you see San Diego, which I also visited, and he wrote a letter in 1965, a article that, you see, what sun is doing, there is no magnet on sun, all protons are coming and hitting the moon. Okay, all high, uh, H, H is coming, forget about hydrogen is coming and hitting the moon, and there may be oxygen in the uh, soil, you have all SiO2, so there may be some interaction and you may produce OH and then what will happen to the OH? He talked about that also. Moon is generally 150 degree centigrade. So a OH or H molecule, if it uh, forms there, it cannot stay there. It will get some energy, it will jump. It will keep on jumping like a blind man or I mean madman all over until it goes near the pole. Because moon, moon is sitting in such a way that pole is not seen by the sunlight near the pole. It is not seen by sun. It is extremely cold. It is minus 100 degrees centigrade. So it will go up, uh, jump and near the pole, it will be very happy, comfortable. So it will get, you know, added and there is a possibility that you can see water in the lunar pole. 
and then there was a instrument in one of the earlier US mis mission. It is a radar which can go below the ground and get some signal and they felt that they have seen something but they couldn't confirm it because they are sending the radar signal from the spacecraft and looking at art, the return. So what we have done when we had a infrared instrument, I told that we cannot get the detector, it came from US and in JPL, Jet Propulsion Lab, they were making it. So I and the PI of that uh, instrument, we visited it. Then we are discussing up to what wavelength we should make it. They can make it 2.6 very easily, no problem, which is the normal thing. Then we said, can you extend it further? They said, yes. Then neither me or the other person told that we are extending this to see water. So they, you will never find in any Chandrayaan thing that we wanted to look for water there. So it is almost like that by mistake only we got it. But no, it is very detailed planning without uh, disclosing. So, so now there are other things, but I will not go about this. And then another thing you see, if you look at the moon, it was once completely molten. So that part and why it has happened also, you could tell from our data. And uh, so let me see what, ah, okay. So this is what I'm saying. You see, you have, uh, this is a dummy. Eh? This is for school kids only mostly. So don't feel bad. Uh, top one is not H2, but I'm calling that H2, uh, and OH is looking much smaller, H is very different, but don't worry. So they are vibrating, so if they take the sun's energy to put to in that frequency, and if they take the energy, they will be absorption. Then what you will see, you see our uh, instrument uh, earlier was going up to 2.6, we said no, no, extend little more, so they can go up to about 2.8, because if water is absorbed, we should see some depression at that wavelength, because water has took that energy. So it will go down a little. And what we saw, and there are three instruments, don't worry. So these are, so now here it is. When you are near the uh, equator of the moon, you don't see anything. When it goes to 43, it goes down a little, but if you say, I am seeing water here, it will be a problem. 43, is still not good. 23, it started coming down, coming down. This is near the uh, 18 degree latitude, so near the polar region. So this is a kind of, you know, it make noise, it came out in a journal called Science, it is on the cover page, so it's like a discovery. And you see, this is what is the distribution, roughly. See, in our middle portion, there is no water, only at the end points, it is there. And in Chandrayaan 2, we will try to land somewhere near here, somewhere and see from the surface what I get. Then once we got it, see, the US, the technology is very, very high level. So we got the laser, they had a mission going to moon. And there was an impactor also there. Be before, behind the impactor, after our result, they immediately put a sensor also. So they release the impactor, it goes and hits the moon. After, you know, we, within short time, they release the other one. It has about two minutes to collect all the data, send it to the main orbiter and crash. See, this is, a, and they did it. And then once they, they overdo it a little, you see those uh, round spots are the spot where they were supposed to go because they are dark, sun doesn't see it and it is black. See this is what has happened. Before impact, and I don't know how they collect this data so quickly, this is only 4 minutes, less than 4 minutes. So there was no signal of any H2O as soon as it has crashed and come out and uh, it cannot come from anything of the spacecraft body. That was absolutely clear for them. So you see it went up and then, but you know, uh, sometimes I like the people who try to analyze this kind of data more than necessary. And the uh, US, uh, they, they are one of those. You see, they have said that they have found all those molecules. <laughs> Apart from, I mean, because you have a graph, so you have to match it. So you put all the different uh, species so that that will properly match all those up and down. But anyway, we are happy that they have also confirmed it. So now, International cooperation, we have uh, three from Europe, two from USA, we even have one instrument from Bulgaria. You said what they can do? You see, they can make a radiation detector in 400 grams where we used to take about one and a half kg. Anything you can save is important, you see, and then now we can also make, but that time uh, we are not sure. So then uh, somebody gave us some award. So I said that we have miles <coughs> to go. This is only the stepping stone. and. Uh, I think we have to go. So why is now you see why I said that we are and uh, the people respect us. All this went between 2009, 2003 to 2014. Okay, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we have only one. Okay, 
they are all trying to go for moon and find something there and china is so aggressive they have already gone uh, let me see which is, so this is europe china us india us us this is the one you see this is going and hit the other one will take the data okay and this is china this is us us china change tree and it has landed we do not have any lender we cannot make it easily it will, it will take long time and then change for what they did they have lot of you know, energy and money also i think they just went and took a, went from earth and took a round around moon and came back to earth so they are practicing that also that they are successful so okay now what we can do we can only meaningfully explore inner solar system because then means up to mars and asteroid itself is a problem because energy many other problems are there okay so what is needed very important technical development that has been initiated hardware rover robotics lander now because in chandrayaan 2 we are going to learn it but again it is because of necessity what happen uh, i think i have told you or not that uh, the russia took a 2 billion dollar satellite up it has russia uh, europe and china and it went up but then it started orbiting only around earth never went up and finally it fell down in a ocean near australia so now that we were that time we are doing and russian said they will give us the lander okay rover we can make but lander is uh, difficult so now once that happen in russia if something happens i went there things are very different everybody get change and you cannot talk to anybody and you don't know what will happen when so we said that we will do it ourselves so we are making both uh, rover uh, and lander also then we do not have energy resource for long term mission because we are depending on the sun more you go away from the sun you have less and less energy and you cannot do it what others do they take nuclear fuel they are thermoelectric nuclear generator us is using it russia is using it uh, that uh, china is using it japan will never use they once took something and went to a uh, uh, asteroid and took some sample back it is only on electrical propulsion but very slow the whole mission took about uh, 20 years so now the people who started they probably all of them retired by the time it came back so but they their technology is there so now so now we thought initially this but just now i told you na because of russian delay so it has got and again you see mars we are not ready but we said we have to do it and mars you can go only once in every two years because of you know it is also orbiting we are also orbiting everybody goes every two years the distance is short to reach it so now let us uh, i'll go. see this is what we hope to do in chandrayaan 2 okay we have to have a lander or orbiter will be there land, uh, rover will be there and uh, realize design and realize lander carrying a rover capable of soft landing very important and i don't know much of technology uh, but uh, this will be a major drag to enhance capabilities to go further because uh, we cannot go to the moon all the time so now no don't worry this is standard uh some so now this is why i'm showing you they are doing this calculation how to make it land because uh, the orbit will be at 100 km this is 100 km then there should be what will be the vertical velocity was zero here then you increase it it is still zero it is coming down then you know something and then finally he said that okay it will uh, and when you go to the Uh, vertical velocity of about 8.3 meters per second then it is safe to land now we have to realize this on time online with autonomous thing there you cannot do it from here so this is a very important from that perspective so these are the two th this uh, rover we we can do it. and this you know you have to do it for the moon's gravity everything working so we do not have that kind of big facility so what is rod it is very easy you take a balloon big balloon fill it up properly so that it takes it up so you have at that uh, g so it is simple but it is very difficult to make it it took it a took a took us a while to make it steady so now anyway there will be some instrument in the lander also you want to put some uh, you know if we can see some seismic activity also if it is there some things but these are not yet final but we are going to chandrayaan to uh, sooner or later okay so now where to land this was done with russians at that time initially so to land a spacecraft 
uh, even if you slow it down or everything, you need a distance this way about 30 kilometers and this way about 10 kilometers. But to land, basically, you need only 2 kilometers. Because you are going to land like this only. But because you are coming, so that kind of smooth head is needed. So with the Russian and Indian work, we have found that this is in North Pole, North Pole, this is in South Pole. So both sides, we have some side where landing can be done. So this work has been also done. Then power, sunlight, you know, that's the only power. And moon luckily get 13, 12, 13, 14 days of sunlight, so we can survive. The moment it goes beyond that, it is cold like hell and everything will may go wrong. So some attempt is being made how to uh, do it, there's something if we can do it. Otherwise, there are some sites in the polar region on uh, moon that you may get long time connectivity, direct connectivity from Earth to that point, which is not true always. But we are trying because we have to go there so something will come up. So now this is the Mars, so anyway you know all about it, too much of talk has been already been there. But this was a mostly technology. Because you see in moon you can talk to the spacecraft and everything on real time. I mean because it's not that far. Your uh, signal will take you know, few seconds, 10 seconds or so, but you can talk. Mars it takes 10 to 12 minutes to reach a signal. So if something goes wrong, if by the time it comes back, you send, it's too much, you cannot do real time. And therefore, uh, uh, so what is, uh, what, you know, we, and we do also very odd ways because we don't have resources. See, the idea is that when it goes out, out of Earth's gravity, by the time it reaches Mars, suppose Mars is here, it is going like that, it should come close so that it attracts. The velocity is quite high, it is more than, you know, 20 kilometers per second. Okay, and now uh, travel time of light is uh, 12 minutes. So no use telling that now you slope down. So you are going like this. First is coming here. We are going towards uh, you know this way. Then what we do to slow it down? We start start turn it around. <laughs> so reverse thrust over here. So then it will slow down a little. And then that slowing down should be such that at a given time because it is going Mars may be there. By the time it reaches there, it slowed down enough that Mars will capture it and it will not fall onto the Earth. Mars, it will orbit around the Mars. So this is something which technology was not easy and that's why we get a credit that we have gone to the Mars at the very first effort. But we must also admit that <coughs> US and Russia, when they were going to Mars, there was hardly any calculator or computer which can give you anything better than second decimal, <laughs> you know, exactly. Now you push in, you know, things to a computer, you get, get, you know, up to 10 decimal accuracy. So you said we got some advantage, but even then people do give credit us that uh, nobody gives any technology or sharing on this space. That is the biggest problem as I see it for fast. Okay, so now you see why Mars becomes so interesting. Because uh, if there is anywhere, uh, because people feel if the water is there, life should be there. If water is there, we should go there. And right now, this is the only place. Because they are absolutely clear that water was there and it is still being formed. And you see, uh, that is Mars on the North Pole. That is uh, ice. Okay? So atmosphere has H2O. So it has to form. So now, what you see here, these are uh, American uh, uh, jeep. They take pictures. So all these things are, these minerals, it is called carbonate, it cannot produce unless water is there. This is uh, some iron bearing uh, mineral, so you again cannot produce if it is there. And uh, this is the ornaments you made with opals. Opal also have lot of water. It is have to in a structure. So now these are found in Mars surface. So water is there and it is uh, not a big problem. But then you see this is the blown up picture of that in the pool it is a lot of water. And then um, big confusion was made by many US people. They said they said they have found methane on the Mars surface then somebody says they have not found and that can be done from Earth with radio telescope. You can get that signal. So now because of that, uh, we, you know this if water is there can light be far behind. So now, see this is what that is one gentleman put. This is a sphere, you can draw the sphere of Mars. Wherever is the red, high methane, green is low methane, blue is no methane. <coughs> methane is organic. If organic is there, it is almost close to life. Water is far away. Because CH4 to produce CH4 is not that easy. I mean, 
So sun can produce H2O, but it cannot produce CH4. Carbon is not. So now this created something and then they immediately once a methane is seen, people can make diagrams like this, which I don't understand, which says that how methane can be formed in that structure. So some of you will understand, that's why I'm giving you, you have biology also here, I know. Okay. So now, so there are some science questions based on that we have proposed. And we are trying to do those things in Mars mission. But like I told you, uh, Mars mission is not a, I will not call it a science mission. Because I was a part of it. We said that we need 60 kilogram. It came to 50. Then it came to 40. Then it became 30. Then it became 25. And finally, 15 kg. I mean, because uh, Mars, going Mars is more important. And then we had a few small, small four instruments. I even dropped PRL instrument also. Because when you have to drop something, it is better to drop yours so that people feel you are not partial. <laughs> so now, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, I am not sure. We have, we got beautiful picture. I think they are there already. Okay, uh, this is how it is difficult to go there. These are the instrument that has gone there, and this is the instrument. Okay, I think I have talked too much. I think you have to have some break here. So now, how to make this break? Can you press that launch? Five, four. So these are some pictures of Mars taken by our satellite. Okay. <coughs> now you can because ours cannot go closer than 800 kilometer, but even then they are very fantastic pictures with all details and which is appreciated. But about water on Moon. So now can you? Uh, then I can do this. Okay. You see. This is a picture from uh, US uh, mission, uh, recent only, all of them are recent. I mean, recent means couple of years old, but they take, they, it took them about a year and a half to analyze and, you know, bring it out. And the main uh, point is that you can, when you see these streaks, okay, and then uh, we also see, but it is not as clear as this, or, you know, something like this drain is better. So, it, it is for sure that uh, water is there, but it is not all the time. It is uh, sometimes it comes and sometimes it goes something like that. So that is why, you know, it is one of the prime target now. And then, of course, we have to go to, you know, asteroid and other things, but that will take some time because main thing is communication and power. See, communication, you can take help from others. Even here in between, when it was going, you saw two some ships. Because we have only one uh, thing from which you control the satellite. Now, if it goes out of view and you need to do something, then you need something else. So we had two ships in the ocean. And because they were not reaching at proper time, actually, the flight was delayed by two days so that we can. And you have seen in between and when it was going, the ship was putting some signal. So all those things have to be done. We, I mean, we are, we, we are not fully stuffed, but still, we try to do something. So now, what are the challenges? You see, launch vehicle, communication and control, and energy resource, these are the main thing. And instrumentation and payload. See, first time we got other people to give us the payload. But one good thing has happened. Now we are good boys, uh, India. So now certain, uh, uh, you know, detector will get without problem. But some high-end detectors will still will not get. You know, suppose somebody says, I'll give you one centimeter resolution, that we may get. But if I want a point one millimeter resolution, I may not get that kind of detector. But all I tell you that ISRO on its own started a, uh, in Chandigarh, new facility, which can do one micron, you know, kind of detector size. But our cell phones are much <laughs> smaller than that now. So we cannot uh, pick up. Too and then you see outer solar system, I saw resources. We need radioactive thermal generator of fuel cell. And if BRC does it, then someday we'll have it. We cannot do it. And for long-term exploration, then iron propulsion and nuclear propulsion. Iron propulsion, like I told you, Japanese have gone, but it is too long. And communication and control, if it goes that far, that's, that far out, we do not have communication capability right now. So whether you call <coughs> Russia, ISA, China, Japan, they are far ahead of us. Uh, you know, in space technology currently, but they feel confused that how we can still do it. So now we need human resource development, technical and academic, and outreach. So another reason, sometimes I go and give talk, you see, uh, we have to catch uh, people or change their mindset when they are very young. So now, I sometimes shout at people, nobody can stop me. 
So because I got, uh, you know, that uh, got into my head. And but uh, this is always inside the room. But so many people say that uh, do I shout? I mean, people don't believe generally, but I do. And uh, same way, you know, uh, we need to somehow to attract uh, younger people. And one of the major blockade is that people are in a rush nowadays. They want everything yesterday. And space is something you even do not know whether you will get it day after tomorrow also or not. So how to somehow that, so you have to, like, you know, sometimes, you know, they do something so that they, that person get, you know, somehow other wrongly or rightly he feels that I can go there. How to do that, I do not know. And we are not good at it. Even here, those who are sitting on the back who are younger than 25 or so, my communication language doesn't touch them. I mean, it, it's a different way of talking and uh, convincing that uh, it is something worth doing it, although there will be a lot of failure. And so how to do it, I think that is one thing which is important. And I just wanted to bring this slide that we are just talking about our own solar system. But nowadays we know that there are many other solar systems, but we don't understand them at all. None of them look like our own Earth. But anyway, since it is science and it is also about the solar system, one good thing about uh, looking at this is that you cannot do very good studies of this. There is no detector available in the market. You have to make it yourself. So in our, uh, PRL, we have been able to make one of those. So now we are also looking at what we can call extrasolar system. I think it is good time that I should stop. That was Chandrayaan 1. There's a picture from Chandrayaan 1 mission. Now you can already see Mars mission pictures are much closer. They cannot, we cannot take that kind of picture. And I think I should like to thank you all for listening to me patiently, even those who are standing on the back. Thank you all. <laughs>